happy Friday potties. I am excited for this episode. It's actually nine o'clock at night when I'm recording this. So I'm just going to throw it out there that either I am super dedicated to my potties. Can I get a whoop whoop? <laughs> or I managed to screw up some scheduling somewhere. <laughs> Either way though, this is coming to you bright and early on a Friday morning and I'm very excited about that. I also now have that Lily Allen song in my head. You know, the one that's like, it's four o'clock in the morning. I can't remember the rest of the words, but I have that in my head now. So for the whole episode, you will know that I am singing that. I'm kidding. Today I have a really awesome guest on. I'm actually really excited for you to hear this conversation. It's something that's very different to what I normally have on the podcast. It's a very different perspective. And you are going to hear a really in-depth and genuinely interesting conversation all about being a highly sensitive entrepreneur. Now, if you're automatically thinking, Jess, I'm not a highly sensitive entrepreneur, I'm absolutely fine. I do not cry at Bambi, like I'm all good. Take a listen anyway, because I was really surprised about some of the things that Heather and I discussed on today's episode. So the lovely Heather Dominic, the founder of the HSE movement, is on the podcast today. And some of the some of the information that Heather shares around how highly sensitive entrepreneurs operate when it comes to sales, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to formulas, when it comes to our coping mechanisms that we use to progress in the world of online business are incredibly interesting. And you might not be sat there, you know, crying at every film going, which I don't, just as an FYI, only, only certain things. <laughs> and if you would like a list of the films that I cry to, please, you know, drop me an email. I'll, I'll tell you, but only secretly. But seriously, it, it's such an interesting insight into how many of us perhaps don't self-identify as being highly sensitive, but actually have these traits that we can immediately recognize once we hear them. And that actually, if we use them differently, we would be able to be a lot more successful, a lot quicker. You know, I listened, I, I, like I say, I listened to this episode. I was part of this episode. I recorded this episode. I had this conversation with Heather and all I could think was, wow, if somebody had told me in year one, of my corporate career, like going that far back. Somebody told me in year one of my corporate career that actually I was highly sensitive or super highly sensitive. Um, and you'll find out what that means during the episode. But if somebody had told me, I'd have probably been a lot more successful than even I was a lot quicker. And I can apply that exact same mentality to my business. And I can look at it from that um, perspective too. So it's a really, really interesting conversation. And if you do make your way through it and you think, actually, I want to be the person who does things differently and you are tired of the cookie cutter, you're tired of the formula, you're trying to fit in all the time and you're feeling different, you aren't alone. Okay. It's, there is going to be something out there. There is going to be a methodology out there that suits you, but sometimes you have to poke around a little until you find it. So have a listen to this episode. Enjoy it. Enjoy Heather's new nickname. And let us know what you think on social media about your key takeaways from whether or not you are highly sensitive as an entrepreneur. And if you are, what you're going to do about it moving forward. Enjoy the conversation. Okay, Poddies, how exciting is this? I'm so psyched about this interview and I'm so psyched to have you on the show. Welcome, Heather Dominic. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here and really looking forward to this conversation. It's so funny because I was just saying this to you before we hit record that a few months ago, and I remember this vividly, I was walking along the beach and in the UK, it's never sunny. But on this particular day... <laughs> This particular day, it was incredibly hot and I'd actually debated going for a run. So, you know, when you put your sports gear on and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go for a run. You kind of have the earbuds in and everything. And then you get outside and wuss out because it's too hot. So you're like power walking to make out like it's okay to have sports gear on. Has that ever happened to you? 
<laughs> I tend to not put on sports gear because I live in New York. So we uh, just walk everywhere anyway. So I kind of just, you know, like I always try to get my cardio, like, you know, on the way to the drugstore to get a coffee. <laughs> I love that. I'm imagining you just running around New York. But yeah, I, I was, uh, I was power walking like an 85 year old trying to look relatively cool. And in my earbuds, I was, I always listen to Ali Brown's Glambition podcast. And I heard your episode because I've been following Ali for a while. So I was going through all the back dated episodes and you came up and it was one of those things you know when you you kind of dig into an episode and you think oh my goodness that's just gold and I actually ended up walking so far that I listened to your episode twice so I kind of feel like I really know you but I don't <laughs> I so appreciate that I really love that that podcast interview got a double play that is really great there we go. And Ali, if you're listening, like that is officially two listens right there from me. I feel like I should be getting some kind of loyalty card. <laughs> so Heather, you have this incredible perspective about human beings. And that's something that I want to obviously flesh out during the interview. But could you just tell us how you got to where you are now and your current focus? Because I just think it's so interesting. Absolutely. Yes. I will try to have it be as concise and compelling as possible after that uh, <laughs> lead in. <laughs> well, so first and foremost, I am the founder and leader of the highly sensitive entrepreneur movement. And what that means, first and foremost, is I mentor entrepreneurs who are also highly sensitive. And what being highly sensitive means is a term that was not created or coined by myself, but actually comes from official research from psychologist and researcher, Dr. Elaine Aaron, and her work from the mid 1990s. And what she discovered through her research is that there are 20% of us in the world who are born highly sensitive. And what that means is that if you are highly sensitive, your nervous system is literally biologically wired differently than someone who is not highly sensitive, meaning that your nervous system takes in stimulation at a much higher degree than, again, someone who's not highly sensitive. So that stimulation could be in the form of sight, sound, smell, touch, energy, information, you name it, any way that you kind of think about inputting, that happens at a much higher stimulation. And again, what's really, really important about that is that it's biological. So I always like to say, mm, nope, your parents didn't do it to you. And um, it's not because of something you picked up on the playground when you were a young one. And it's not because of that weird drink that you had in college. It is literally how your nervous system is coded. So what this means is that then the way that you interact and process literally everything in the world is different than someone who is not highly sensitive. So where my work comes in is how does that translate to someone who desires to be self-employed? And the real short of it is in terms of how I came to this work is, you know, first of all, I've been self-employed for the last 16 years now. And I was about five years into being self-employed. I had brought my business across the million dollar mark for the first time. And it was a really rough experience. I would love to say that it was like amazing and celebratory and I threw up a new website and everything was really fabulous. And that was not the case. I was actually extremely overwhelmed. I was overworked. I was overexhausted. And I really went into a dark, dark night of the soul where I was just really questioning everything. I didn't know if this is what I was meant to be doing. And if it wasn't this and what is it? And through that inquiry, that is first and foremost, when I was connected to Dr. Aaron, and discovered that I was highly sensitive. I had never even heard the phrase at that time. But once I heard it and then understood what it meant, it didn't surprise 
surprise me so much that I was highly sensitive. But what did surprise me was that when I took one of her assessments, I was off the charts highly sensitive. And because I've always been a firm believer and teacher in the fact that your ideal client is a version of you, I had 25 women entrepreneurs that I was working with in person at the time. I had them all take one of Dr. Aaron's assessment and every single woman in that room was highly sensitive. And what was really interesting about that was that there wasn't one woman in that room who wanted to be highly sensitive. They really saw it as a detriment, they saw it as a weakness, they saw it as a negative label, and I just knew right then and there that this was something that was really important and that something that really needed to be addressed. And that was really the beginning of the highly sensitive entrepreneur movement. And since then, I've just continued to create a great body of work that includes trainings and teachings and tools about how to take this aspect of yourself and really utilize it so it is an absolute strength and fully available to support you in your business rather than work against you. I really love that. And there are so many things that I just want to unpick there. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my God, Jess, ask this and that, don't worry, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm going to warm up. But what I really love about that is the, the end piece there about making it work for you. I think in the online space, you know, there's, there's been this tendency over the last couple of years to become a victim or to fall victim to situations, you know, and, and I think particularly, unfortunately, within the more spiritual community, there's more of a victim mentality now because, you know, the, the business world has changed and because actually, you know, there's this tendency to blame and shame rather than look at our strengths and weaknesses and go, okay, well, how can we, how can we really use those for our best benefit? And I really love that you know, being highly sensitive, it's one of those things that, like you've said, not everybody in the room, nobody in the room wanted to be, but actually everybody in the room is able to make it work for them. I just think that's really poignant. Absolutely. First, thank you. And second, absolutely agree. And, you know, what I would say is first and foremost, you know, what you're sharing in terms of, you know, are you going to be, excuse me, are you going to choose to be a victim? right? Or are you going to choose to really step into, I mean, like unintentionally like quote Joel Steen now, but like, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I can't say anything else, but like victim or victor is like one of the things that he talks about, right? But the thing is, especially for those of us who are highly sensitive is that literally the traits that you have because you are highly sensitive really equip you to be an excellent service-based business provider and owner. It's why those of us who are highly sensitive actually feel called to be self-employed. Now, everyone who's in the Business Miracles community and mentoring programs that I offer for HSEs are all service-based. And whether they are you know, in a more traditional business, such as let's say a dentist or a real estate broker, or maybe they're you know, one of the many forms of coaches that are in our mentoring programs, or someone who's more of you know, falling into like the healing practitioner category or a creative entrepreneur, everyone is service-based because literally our abilities that come from being highly sensitive poise us to be really, really excellent service providers. And are you going to actually then choose to use those traits to also really support you in marketing and selling and operations? Or are you going to stay using you know, your word in this victim place of like, wow, I really have this gift to bring to the world, but ugh, all that business operation stuff, that's too much for me. That just throws me into, you know, the HSE shadow of overwhelm. And again, it doesn't have to be that way. I just, I think that's awesome. And I think it's so empowering because I think there is that, you know, we've talked about the, the victim victor choice piece, but I think it's actually really empowering because I think what we hear so often now is that we have to want it all in a certain way. 
you know, and what I mean by that is that there's a different culture going on now. Everyone thinks that there's a formula to setting up their business. You know, everyone thinks there's one formula for marketing, one formula for sales. And actually what we're saying is, no, being an HSE is about using your skills to develop your own non-cookie cutter way of doing it and using your unique strengths to position yourself at the top of your market. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so appreciative that you really tuned right into that because that's absolutely it. So you can absolutely create HSE financial success and it's really going to look differently Mm -hmm. than what I refer to as the other 80%, someone who's not highly sensitive. And that sounds kind of easy, but then when you actually really start to engage in that process, it becomes very clear that there's a lot to unpack there because, yeah, we all want the super easy formula, right? And if there really was only one super easy formula, we would all be using the super easy formula. (laughs) (laughs) And if anyone finds that formula, please send it over, like, (laughs) even now. Yeah. So there has to be this willingness to, you know, first and foremost, just kind of let that fantasy go and instead replace it with an embracing of the process of the process of one, what it just really means to be highly sensitive to how do you really want your business to look and to be so that you are really, really fulfilled and you're in that really awesome HSE strength zone. And then three, be willing to continuously engage in that creative process. And part of that being willing to accept that, yeah, you know what, you're doing it differently. And that doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. And that is so much, again, of the process to unpack. And I, you know, I think it's, I just want to come back there to that piece around understanding being a highly sensitive entrepreneur, because this is something that I think has come up for me time again, certainly when I was researching this episode, and I started thinking about it, and I took your quiz, which I'm hoping we're going to talk more about in a minute, but I found it really interesting because for me, I'm not somebody who typically would have described myself as being highly sensitive, because I mistakenly thought that being highly sensitive was something that was a certain trait of, you know, a certain personality type, or, you know, I felt like I was never the shy kid in school. So how could I be highly sensitive? And, you know, there were those questions for me that really came up taking the quiz. Do you find that there are commonalities between people who are highly sensitive that actually are easily identifiable? Or is it more of a, a sensory kind of thing? I would say it is easily identifiable once you really understand, you know, what highly sensitive means. And I think I hear you speaking to something that's really important, which is, again, just going back to the definition from Dr. Aaron, you know, that highly sensitive is really about the way that your nervous system, you know, interprets or inputs stimulation. So again, that impacts how you process versus the way that that word is often used in our society, the word sensitivity, tends to speak more only to the emotional aspect, right? Like maybe Mm -hmm. someone who is overly sensitive. And when I first really started the work in regards to the HSE movement, I really often differentiated between what I would refer to as an OSE, an overly sensitive (laughs) entrepreneur, and HSE you know, which is about being, again, a highly sensitive entrepreneur. And there really is a difference. And yes, there's an emotional component to being highly sensitive, but it's not the only component. That's really interesting because I love what you say there about overly sensitive versus highly sensitive, because I think there's a, uh, an expression that I've heard recently. And obviously, because I'm a Brit, we get the best expressions so much later than everybody else. But there's this thing going around the internet at the moment that I can only describe as being butthurt by things. I don't know whether that's a kind of New York phrase, but it's, it's been coming on a, a lot from my American friends. And it is people who are just taking you know, offense at all of the, the wrongdoing that's going on in the world at the moment, which you know, is understandable. We all have that, but they're portraying themselves as being overly sensitive versus people who are willing to look 
at how they could perhaps change those situations. They're the people with the voice as opposed to the people with the action. Yes, absolutely. Right. I mean, that says it all, the action piece, right? Yeah. And again, for someone who is highly sensitive and also really desires to be self-employed, there is going to be one, just the necessity, right, to partner both the inner and outer approach to business, which is so much of what I offer, you know, again, in the Business Miracles Mentoring Programs, because you need both. Mm. You definitely need the outer action. You can't be self-employed without, you know, being willing to engage in that constant process and practice of taking action. And there is that inner process of also unpacking all of these, I would say almost like nuanced, internalized meanings that most likely each HSE has made over their years of what it means to be highly sensitive. Because, you know, again, Dr. Aaron's work is just from the mid nineties, right? So most of us who are entering into the space now who are highly sensitive and, and entrepreneurs, we weren't taught how to work with this aspect of ourselves before, you know, entering into the world. So what I find is a real commonality among HSEs is one, there's been this whole experience of keeping this aspect of themselves secret. Mm. And two, feeling that this secret aspect of themselves is wrong, which tends to then lead to what I refer to in my work as the HSE coping mechanisms, meaning You've learned how to cope with this aspect of yourself. And those fall into three categories in, in, as part of my work and my research. I refer to the coping mechanisms as either you have the coping mechanism of pushing, you have the coping mechanism of hiding, or you have the coping mechanism of combo plattering, which is literally a combination of the two, pushing and hiding. And I'm happy to talk about those more if that would be helpful. But what I'll say is that if you desire to be an entrepreneur, you have to go beyond coping and you have to go into creating. And that's that action piece that I hear you speaking to. So I think that's really interesting. I think, you know, I loved it when you broke down the coping mechanisms because I see that so often in particularly the women that I work with or that are part of my community, the hiding piece is a big thing. You know, and I'd love if you could speak more to those definitions, because I think it's actually if we could speak to the definitions and also to knowing whether it's actually the definition the, the, or the coping mechanism, sorry, that's causing the problem or whether it's procrastination, because I think that's also quite an interesting twist. Sometimes we're being told so often, oh, you're doing this or it's natural to do that, that we become those things rather than actually being able to identify, is this a coping mechanism that I have that is a learned behavior for me and, and want to change that? Does that make sense? Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. I so appreciate that. So what I would say first, I'll give brief definitions of the coping mechanisms. So the coping mechanism of pushing is where you have learned as a highly sensitive to really be able to get done in the external world, whatever an 80 percenter can get done, someone who's not highly sensitive. So you will make that happen. However, it comes at a high cost, typically in the arenas of health issues and or relationship issues where those same actions, again, for a non-highly sensitive, is not going to come at that same high cost. So I will happily out myself. I am a recovering pusher. For, <laughs> for, absolutely. That was that moment when I brought my business across the million dollar mark for the first time. It was absolutely from pushing and it came at a massively high cost. So I always say it's not about the amount of income that had been generated. It was the way that I had gone about it. I am now happily a seven-figure business owner and totally do things so much differently and super, super happy, super, super healthy, like just really such, such a 180. So that's a coping mechanism of pushing. Now the coping mechanism of hiding what I would say is probably different here 
than what you're speaking to in regards to procrastination is that the coping mechanism of hiding tends to stem from the highly sensitive tendency to try to avoid being overwhelmed at all costs. So it's not just about whether you're overwhelmed or not, because of course we all get overwhelmed, right? Whether you're highly sensitive or not, but it is about the way that you respond to it. And again, hiding is not even how I'm going to respond to being overwhelmed. It's about what can I do to, again, avoid even the possibility of being overwhelmed because the highly sensitive tends to feel just such a level of anxiety about what will happen if they become overwhelmed because they've had some experience, right? With like really losing control, you know, just of their sensory self as a result of that overwhelm. Again, we all get overwhelmed, but a highly sensitive when they're experiencing overwhelm is it completely floods their system, completely takes them out. So if you tend towards a coping mechanism of hiding, you are the entrepreneur who has the most beautiful website. Your marketing materials are amazing. You have completely mapped out fabulous, fantastic programs. And at the end of the day, very little to no income is being generated. One, because you're using all of the, that creation as a way to hide from actually being out there marketing and selling, or again, needing to put yourself into any other type of vulnerable position, which you do need to do as an entrepreneur, all to avoid that fear of being overwhelmed. So the hider, that's also the person who is often tends to be a martyr for the people in their lives. So they're the person who absolutely in their quote unquote business day will be taking care of their spouse, their children, their neighbor, their neighbor's pets, their neighbor's pets, pets, like just you name it. The hider will be the one to show up and then wonder at the end of the day, geez, wow, I wonder why I just didn't really get much done in my business. Or again, why don't I actually have the income that I need to be generating in my business? Then the combo platter, again, that's the person who flip-flops back and forth between pushing and hiding and pushing and hiding. And as I like to say, that is the HSE definition of insanity because you will literally drive yourself crazy. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm now sat here thinking, yeah, all those times I've taken an Amazon parcels for my neighbors, that stops. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't mean that you can't be or aren't meant to be kind, right? It's just where are the prioritizing, right? Excuse me, the priorities. Like where are we and what are we prioritizing? So that's how it differentiates from procrastination, right? Because again, when you're in that hiding coping mechanism, it's all about how can I make it? How can I make it through the day? How can I make it in this world that's not designed for me without anyone really being able to tell so much that I'm actually having a different experience than they are? And that is very different versus, oh, I know I should do this thing, but either I don't really want to or I'm afraid to because of this, that, or the other thing, or this might actually bring me you know, the success that I want very different than I'm not going to do this because I am protecting myself. That's one of the HSE shadows that I've identified, which is overprotection. I'm protecting myself from, again, not just overwhelm, but even the possibility of becoming overwhelmed. That's so interesting. And, and I think what's even more interesting for me, I'm kind of looking at that definition or those definitions and thinking, yeah, I can immediately hear Poddies who are listening and the penny is just dropping like all over the place for people thinking yeah no that's a hundred percent me that's exactly what i do but the thing that i find most interesting and inspiring about that is that you have created this entire movement around being a highly sensitive entrepreneur and actually you know whichever definition or whichever coping mechanism you look at whether it's pushing or hiding you've created this global movement of people who can now identify themselves as being or as having, as you put it, that different experience in the world and leveraging their skills. And, and I think that's phenomenal. And I, I would love for you to share what the creation of that journey looked like versus the pushing of your business past a million dollars in the first instance. Oh my gosh. Yes, for sure. 
So I, I heard you speak to something that's very important, which is the piece of recognition and awareness. Mm-hmm. So in addition to the coping mechanisms, the next step in my teachings is what I refer to as the HSE coping cycle, because most of us are not existing in that space of coping as a pusher or coping as a hider or coping as a combo platter 100% of the time. There's a cycle that we get tossed into when we are triggered into that coping mechanism. And the way out of the coping cycle, the very first step out of the coping cycle is awareness. So That was definitely my experience. And as I shared, it came in a really, really difficult package, which is often the case. To cope your way through, yes, you can absolutely manage in that way. But as I like to share with the members in the Business Miracles community, like, do you want to get to your last day, you know, and on your gravestone, it says, she got by. Wow. Is that what you want? And if you do, then absolutely working and you know your way through by coping for sure. But most highly sensitives who are attracted to being entrepreneurs don't want that to be the last statement on their gravestone for this life. They recognize there's something more that I have to offer here. And now I have to learn how to be able to do that. So Again, the moment of awareness, one, is something that's repeated over and over again as you learn to move your way out of the coping cycle and into that creation space of being an entrepreneur. But for me, it really came again in that difficult package where I was literally at the end of my my rope. I, I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I withdrew from everything. I took myself off of every email list. Social media, honestly, was kind of just getting started at that time. <laughs> it sounds so old, but, you know, again, this has been a 16-year journey so far. But I just withdrew from everything. The only thing I did was continue to just pour my love into the clients that I was serving at the time. And I went into a very, very deep place of self-inquiry. And now that is a process that I teach in the mentoring programs as well, where it doesn't have to be this huge, deep, dramatic space that I was in during that dark night of the soul, but instead can just be a tool that you can go to when you recognize, wait a minute, something is off here. Then you can go into a place of inquiry that will help you to better understand what's happening so that you can make a different choice. And that's everything that getting out of the coping cycle is about. And that was definitely my experience. And I really came to this space and place of making a decision, right? Which was that I know that I have something really valuable to offer. I know I'm really, really good at what I do. And I can say that is also another commonality among HSEs. We know in our heart of hearts, we are an excellent coach. We're an excellent healing practitioner. We're an excellent creative in whatever form that might come in. And then it's about, okay, how do I set this up as a day-to-day system, as a day-to-day existence that I don't have to feel like I'm working against myself the entire time. And that was really the journey that I started on. And again, those first 25 women were a massive motivator for me because I looked at that room of 25 women and I saw 25 really talented and skilled women. And I thought, oh my gosh, one, I don't want them to have to experience what I've gone through. And two, I don't want them to believe that they can't bring this gift to the world just because They're not meant to be going about business in that 80 percenter hardcore marketing, selling operations way. There absolutely can be a different approach. And so again, that's just what I've continued to live every single day since. And my business looks very differently. And I've just been, you know, so, so blessed to be able to support and mentor others doing the same. And when I say the same, Every HSE is not setting up their business to look like my business because that wouldn't make sense. 
But instead, what I'm teaching is what is your business meant to look like? And then let's create that. And here are the trainings and the tools that we can use to go about it. So I hope that answers because I, I know it's kind of a little bit nebulous, but you know, at least to be able to highlight the difference between, you know, that, that pre time and, and where I am now. No, I love that. And I think it's also really powerful, you know, as a side note that you went from identifying 25 women. Okay. Here are 25 women that I could help, that I could transform for them, the experience that they're having to the huge community that you've built today. And I think that, you know, if you're listening to the podcast, sometimes it can be really easy when we have guests on or when I talk about my business, it can be really easy to get caught up in comparison mode of, well, it's okay for that person to say because they've got X amount of thousands of followers, or it's okay for that person to say because they've got a Facebook group with X amount of thousands of people in it. And the reality is that every business, every business that is built that is successful is built not from that thousands of person place. They start exactly where you are right now. You know, and I think the difference is that now we have so many ways to access our audience. We get so caught up in visibility. We get so caught up in the formulas that actually people forget everybody had to start from the start. And what I love about the whole HSE movement is that actually, you know, what we're saying is, here you go, here's another tool. Here's a tool for you to help you make the best decisions for you, to help you make the best choices, to help you get the best results for however you think and feel about the world around you and then the way that you deal with certain situations and, and things like that. And I just think, you know, I think that's a really important point for people to understand that you've built this incredible business on the basis of 25 women in a room. Absolutely. And I'm so, so glad that you're speaking to that. And I really wish that more people would. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think it's a real disservice on the internet when, you know, there's, there's so many people kind of, you know, barking and, and yelping about how it really is easy if you just do X, Y, Z. And not to say that that might not actually work for some people, but in truth, being in business is a very organic experience. Mm. It's not linear. And that is something that is really hard for a lot of people to get their mind around. And personally, I think we can trace it back to education. Mm. <laughs> but you know, I, I won't say a lot about that, because that's kind of another conversation. But you know, we all entered, you know, primary school, and you're told, like, if you do x, y, and z, you know, you go from this grade to the next grade. But being in business isn't like that. It's a very organic process. So what I hear you speaking about when you talk about that moment with 25 women in the room, I couldn't have in that moment been able to sit down and map out and say, okay, this is now where I'm going to be when I talk to Jessica in 2019. I could have never done that. And, and I don't know where I'll be the next time you and I talk. And I'm sure you can probably say the same. So it does take instead a willingness to you know really embrace where you are and then from that space to really be able to continue to follow the next step and the next step and the next step really assessing and learning along the way and that's the thing that i really like to highlight for hses because one of our hse shadows is perfectionism and HSEs will absolutely hold themselves back under the belief that I can't put anything out into the world until it's perfect. And what that really stems from is, again, back to that, that protection mode, which is I don't want to be found out for being different. So I better have absolutely all of my I's dotted and my T's crossed. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work when you're interested in being an entrepreneur. So again, it goes back to that willingness to be engaged in the process. And then the only other thing that I'll, I'll share based on, you know, what you so brilliantly said is that it's also not about the numbers. Hmm. Like that is such an easy myth to get caught up in. And I made that decision early on. So, you know, you can look at my Instagram 
And you could compare it to somebody who has, you know, thousands and thousands of followers. But because someone has thousands and thousands of followers, one, that doesn't necessarily mean that that computes to financial success. Two, it doesn't mean that it computes to happiness and a sense of purposefulness within the day-to-day -day of their business. And three, it definitely doesn't mean then that it computes to a combination of the two, right? Where you can have a sense of being purposeful and fulfilled and also financially satisfied. None of that is represented in the numbers. And if you're really interested in being in business from a place of service, and if you're interested in being in business for the long term, and I am super about creating solid, sustainable success, where this is not a fly by night, this is not a flash in the pan, this is not, you know, let me create something really fast and sell it tomorrow. It is, this is my life's work. And if that's what you're interested in, then, you know, it's not a popularity game. <laughs> yeah. I love that you said that. And like, it's not about the cool kids hanging out, you know, by the bike shed smoking or whatever the, the cool thing yeah. is. Well, I kind of feel like the generation after mine, they're no longer behind the bike shed smoking. They're all drinking like kombucha or something on a field. <laughs> <laughs> Bite. Spiked, probably spiked. <laughs> <laughs> Much cooler. But it's, it's that kind of thing. It's, it's not about the numbers. And I, I, it frustrates me that people focus so much. And, and particularly you brought up that trait there around perfectionism. There are so many people who are stopping themselves taking action or selling to their list because they're like, oh, well, I've only got 100 people. And the reality is if you're selling something that is a high ticket, high transformation offer, if 10 of those 100 people buy and you're selling it for 10k anyway you've made your first six figures it really is that easy you know so 100 percent. you know if you're identifying with what heather's saying here then you really need to be assessing is that perfectionism stopping my progress because yes, ultimately, for sure yeah that's what we're looking for right we're looking for progress it's about moving forward consistently well, and also something that you said is something that I've spoken to for years, right? Which is like, let's just look at that phrase. I only have a hundred people. All right. Yeah. So let's just stop for a second. That's a hundred people. Mm -hmm. Like these are people like living, breathing. They have thoughts, they have feelings, they have wants, they have needs. There's something that you have that they're interested in because those people have said, yes, I would like to hear from you. 100 people. Hey, I did not even have 100 people at my wedding. So, like, <laughs> you know, like people, that is the thing that we can so easily forget in this information, you know, day and age, which is behind every, you know, every person who's following you here, following you there, who has joined your newsletter list. That is a person. So if you can really, you know, drop the popularity contest, drop the need for perfectionism, and instead be willing to be in relationship, to be in conversation, then absolutely exactly what you said, Jessica, is it's 10 out of those 100, right? And, but that piece of like, wow, I have to really be willing to step forward and engage. And the irony for HSEs is that is where their strengths lie. We have HSE strengths that make us such excellent relators, which again is what ultimately drives and motivates HSEs to be in business in the first place. And then that is where the fear comes in. So that's part of what needs to be unpacked. But if you can, again, step out of your shadows and into your strengths and just step into relating with those people, you will connect with your sacred contracts. You will connect with those people that you are meant to serve. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. 10, 100, 1,000, whatever. It's literally about like, are you going to do the work to step forward and make a connection and be of service. I love that. Thank you so much for today. Seriously, I am I know that I'm going to go and give myself like two listens now because I'll be listening to this again when it comes out. It's just been such an insightful 
conversation and I know that you know there'll be potties everywhere thinking right okay I definitely think this is me where is the best place for them to find out if they are really a highly sensitive entrepreneur and find out more about your work and, and what they can do to start harnessing their own unique strengths Sure. Well, first, I'm so honored that this might be another double play. <laughs> <laughs> we should just we should just call you double play Dominic. Like that's it. Like <laughs> I'm just gonna get you a badge. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I see you in your workout gear, totally <laughs> listening and re-listening. And then from there, if you have been listening and have this little inkling that you might be a highly sensitive entrepreneur then I would definitely recommend that quiz that you spoke to earlier, Jessica. That would really be a great first step. And you can find that at www.hsequiz.com. And it's really an assessment, not a quiz, because there's no pass or fail, but HSE quiz makes a better URL. (laughs) Um, And once you take the quiz, then you will find out at the end of the assessment if you are either a somewhat HSE or a super HSE, or if you are like me and you are a super uber HSE, and then you'll receive a free HSE success guide, depending on, again, matched for whether you're somewhat super or super uber, that will give you the first steps that you can start to take to really work with this aspect of yourself. And again, that's hsequiz.com. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on today. Seriously, it's been such a privilege. I'm so glad we were able to connect. So privilege all mine. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And guys, honestly, I really would highly recommend that you take the quiz over at hsequiz.com. I have, uh, and I am a super highly sensitive entrepreneur, which I'm very excited about. I downloaded my free guide. I looked at all the points and I was like, oh, there we go. This is why I overgive in certain situations. This is what I do. So if you're looking for some insights into yourself as a highly sensitive entrepreneur and you get between 10 and 21 answers that reflect that, then you are like me. So we should basically be buddies. And if you do take the quiz, please make sure you do go on social media and tell Heather and I what your score was and what you think about how you feel about moving forward as an HSC. Because I think it's, it's such an interesting conversation to start. Would love that. What a great idea. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. I honestly so appreciate it. Like I say, double listen, Dominic. I'm all over <laughs> this one. And guys, if you've enjoyed the episode, like I say, please do go to hsequiz.com. Make sure that you take the quiz and that you share the results and your key takeaways from this episode over on Instagram or social media, wherever, you know, or social media, like it's different. But whatever platform you like to choose. And I will see you on Monday for another episode.